Back in May of this year, German app developer Mario Tomiak took the iPhone photography world by storm with his revolutionary long exposure app, Eve Longer. 12-bit raw capture, ultra-realistic and natural looking motion blur, virtually noiseless results, bracketing and interims, even longer made it all possible with an iPhone for the first time. But it turns out Mario wasn't finished. This is the new even longer. It looks pretty much the same as the old even longer, except for this format switcher and this. This is your gateway to light trails and star trails. Now, unfortunately for me, star trails just aren't logistically possible at this moment in time. So for those, for the very first time on my channel, I'm going to be handing over to someone else, someone who is in a very far away land where star trails are but a quick kangaroo ride away. G'day guys, Shane Morrison here. I'm coming to you from Kahuna, Australia. Kahuna is oh, it's kind of the outback in Australia. And the reason that we've teamed up for this video is David's going to look after the light trails part of this video because, well, he lives in town and I'm going to look after the star trails because we have some of the best skies here in Australia. So stay tuned. More from Shane a little bit later on. Now let's get into the light trails. So does light trails mode actually work? Do you get sweet rivers of light? Does it live up to even longer's lofty standards? Well, while it can indeed deliver light trails, the quality of which is right up there with the best on the iPhone, I found getting to this point and producing an overall decent result can be a bit of a battle. You see, in order to capture continuous light trails, you need to make sure the actual shutter speed is as slow as possible, preferably one second, which will give you lots of real light trails the app can then merge together. You can see this happening here. There's the first one second photo, the next one and the next. But with even longer, since there's no manual controls, you have to rely on the app to choose that one second shutter speed for you. And not only that, you have to rely on it balancing that one second shutter speed with the appropriate ISO, which is what even longer hasn't been doing consistently for me. A lot of the time, it was fine. It would choose a low ISO and a one second shutter speed. often enough to become frustrating, it wouldn't. And I'd find myself messing around with the exposure compensation, just hoping it would do the right thing. And I just felt like I was at the mercy of the exposure meter. The most obvious and best solution for this would be to implement manual controls, just like you get in even longer's closest competitor, the moment app, where you can just dial in the exact ISO and shutter speed you want. But even longer does have an ace up its sleeve, which is if you subscribe to its pro membership, it can shoot in full 12 bit raw. This means even if your result is slightly overexposed, you have a lot of flexibility to fix it later. It also means textures look so good. Here you can see all of the fine detail in the road surface, whereas the moment apps processed file just compresses most of it away. I'll give you my final thoughts and some thoughts on price in Bit. But for now, let's hang over. <laughs> okay, um, that was a blooper. Yeah, uh, that's embarrassing. Um, usually I would put the bloopers at the end of the video and I'm, I'm going to continue to do so. There'll be a couple there for you, especially you, Andreas. Uh, but if you want a lot more bloopers, like pretty much all of them, and you want to see some behind the scenes into how these videos are made, including this one, and consider becoming a member of my channel for just £1.99p a month. Over to Shane. For me to recommend an app to you guys, it needs to like fill a few boxes, three boxes really. One, is it easy to use? Because it's phone photography and if it's not easy to use, well, why are we doing it? Two, is it better than anything else out there that's available? Because why would I recommend something to you when the next thing is just better? And three, 
how good are the results? If the results are good, if they're worthwhile doing, I'm gonna show you what it is. So far, this app, it ticks all three of those boxes. It's easy to use, the results are good, and it's better than anything else. Star trails for the iPhone have always been done, in my opinion, best with a uh, nightcap app, and it has a star trails mode in that app. And it's a really, really, really good app. And if I was to say that uh, nightcap app, star trail mode is a very good app, I'm going to say that even longer in star trail mode is just bloody brilliant. To give you an example of what I mean, here is a photo that I've taken with nightcap app in star trail mode. And here is a photo that I've taken with even longer in star trail mode. You tell me which one is better. There are two types of star trails and this app does it incredibly well. You've got the circular sort of star trails and that's pointing south or pointing north. You basically get your compass out when you're south. I've explained how to find south before, but if you've got an iPhone, it's got a bloody compass in there. Find south go a little bit off the horizon and you're going to be shooting those circular sort of star trails. And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, find the Northern Star or just use your compass, go to North, point the same sort of direction and you're going to get the circular sort of um, star trails as well. If you want the linear ones, basically don't point South or don't point North, point somewhere else and you're going to get the linear ones. Simple as that. Let's set this app up now for star trails. We'll go into the app, open the app up, close that. We'll go to star trails, it's already on star trail mode, but it's the button down the cent in the left hand side on that row. It's got FA now, which is frame averaging. We've got light trails and we've got star trails. Star trails is what we're doing here. The duration now is where we're gonna set it. Down the bottom there in the gear icon, go into the, up the top there, you've got total time now for star trail photography. Really, you want to be 40 minutes. You don't really want to be less than 40 minutes. You can do it, but you're going to get much better results. It's gonna look pretty bloody good at 40 minutes or more. This will go up to 10 hours. 10 hours, that would be awesome. Anyway, let's carry on. We'll go to 40 minutes. Up the top there, that's an hour, 50, 40 minutes. It does save it at intervals as well. And if you save it at the intervals, well, you don't get the whole lot. It'll, so it'll save it for five minutes, then it will save the 10 minutes worth of photo, maybe then the 15 minutes worth of photo, the 20 minutes worth of photo, not five, 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 five. Important to remember that. Down the bottom here, or through midway through, you've got RAW, JPEG, and TIFF, and then you've got the shutter uh, delay. And I'll always recommend to you, keep this on a good tripod because it's incredibly sharp. And any little bump is gonna ruin your photo. Trust me, it's that sharp. So I would make sure you've got a delay on there. So when you hit the shutter button, you're not touching anything when it goes off. But two seconds is fine for me. Hit the X down the bottom. Now we'll talk about focusing. Focusing on this is not going to work because I've got lights going on here so you can see my ugly mug as I'm talking to you. But basically you're going to go on the left hand side of those boxes. We've got manual focus, auto focus as well. So we're going to go to manual focus. It's going to, it's just like photographing stars with your phone anyway. I'll turn this light off and that will give us a bit more light there. And you can see there some stars out there on the horizon. I'm going to hit the magnifying glass and bring that magnifying glass onto one of those stars. Because it's just so bloody dark, it's a little bit difficult. There we go. Right there, that star is now in the magnifying glass and we adjust the mag we adjust the focusing now with those arrows. I'm just gonna go to the right. The small arrows, the single arrows will go one stop at a time. The double arrows will go 10 stops at a time. I'm gonna go to the double one to bring up to 89 and already that's gone really super, super sharp. I found that about 87, 88, 89 on focusing on the stars is pretty much on the on the money there. So I'm gonna to go to 88, and we'll leave it there. That's it, there's nothing else to do, nothing. Hit the shutter button, and we wait. So I'll wait and take this, like 40 minutes is the sort of duration that you want. While we're waiting for that to go, let's have a chat about this app. There's a couple of things here that some people may not like. Um, one is that it costs you money, and like anything else in life, if you don't pay for something, you get what you pay for. If you want something that's not going to do a really good job, well, don't pay for it. I can tell you now, the development that's gone into this app, it's worth every freaking penny. I think it's like nine bucks a year. So it is a subscription, it is not much of a subscription. It's a couple of coffees every year, 
to get this sort of functionality. And what we're seeing so far, it's the tip of the iceberg. This guy who's developing this, he's not just sitting there doing nothing. It's getting better and better and better. It's worth getting this app. The second thing, and this is more of a, well, when I first saw it, I thought there's something wrong with this but there's not. It's just something that we can work around. When there's a little bit of light pollution doing these sorts of photos, it tends to get a little bit of a magenta cast around the photo, especially around the edges. And it's nothing that I haven't been able to fix yet. I can still fix it. You can fix it in an edit. It's just that it's there. And it, for some people that might not be, for some, especially for people who don't edit photos, you may not want to do that. But uh, if you're shooting in RAW, well, you're going to edit anyway. But when, what I've found is that when there's a little bit of light pollution, um, and that's for me that's from the moon and a little bit of cloud cover um, as in some cloud in there and the moon's lighting that cloud i get a little bit of magenta cast but it's easily fixed in editing afterwards to me that's not that big a deal the results are still mint have a look at this photo this is the unedited photo and you see how nice and crisp and sharp that is it's really 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 impressive this is out of a mobile phone that's just bloody ridiculous i can see lots of people having a lot of fun with this double exposures putting things in the foreground have a look here as well here are the interval photos and you can see there how it's built up over time really quite cool Thanks, David Addison. Awesome doing a video with you, mate. Really, really enjoyed it. All the way from the UK. I think uh, we might do something like this again in the future, mate. Anyway, thanks, guys. I'll see you all next week. Catch you later. Thanks for that, Shane. Shane's so enthusiastic, and I'm so grumpy compared to him. And after watching that, I can't help but think that, like, have I been a bit harsh on the light trails here? But... No, no, I stand by what I've said. I don't think I've been unreasonable. And despite having like an overall bit of a disappointing experience with Eva Longa's light trails, I think it's partially because like the, when I first saw Eva Longa, when I first use it with the frame averaging raw and the bracketing and the interims and the 10 hour capture and stuff like that, it was such a phenomenon. It was such a game changer. I think part of me was expecting everything to be that same sort of, level so i think a bit of that was was creeping in but overall i think i've been objective and despite everything that i've said even longer will now be my go-to my first choice for light trails because i can't ignore that raw quality and even if you don't pay the pro membership and get access to raw even if you're shooting in jpeg the JPEG still uses the raw data, so you still get some insane levels of quality when it gets the exposure right, except if you want to shoot with the ultra-wide camera. For some reason, the light trails don't work on the ultra-wide uh, camera, but for me, that's it's not an issue because the ultra-wide camera sucks. No offense, no offense, uh, ultra-wide camera, but you suck big time, man. I don't, I do not use you. Sorry. <laughs> And speaking of pro membership and price, I want to talk about this uh, for a second before I wrap up. Because after my first couple of even longer videos, and every every video so often, every so often video, you know what I mean, the, the, this issue of price comes up. It came up with Halide, it's come up again with even longer, of things being too expensive and subscriptions and stuff like that. And I do have a full pricing video planned where I interview developers and get their perspective and and. and things so um so stay tuned for that but for now with even longer when you compare it to other slow shutter apps particularly slow shutter cam at 199 yeah even longer does seem expensive and at the end of the day it depends on what even longer's features are worth to you but having said that even longer is not alone there is something else that lets you do automated frame average draw. They're called the Phase 1 IQ4 series of digital backs and currently these are the only other option you have if you want to shoot automated frame average draw. They're available now and you can buy one starting at £28,000 and that's just for the digital back. You don't get a camera system or a lens with that. If you want the camera system you're looking at about 35 plus thousand pounds and you want a lens with that then <laughs> you better get your wallet out again and i think this kind of puts even longer's cost into perspective so let me know what you think the more comments the merrier good or bad doesn't matter to me let's talk about it
thanks you again to Shane for, for your contribution, dude. Looking forward to collaborating with you in the future. And thanks to you for watching. Back at an end. Now, unfortunately for me, I... Uh, now, unfortunately for me, star trails just aren't logistically possible at this moment in time. So, don't hit the microphone. Someone from a very far... Someone, someone in a very far away land who, someone, someone who is in a far away, go away plane or helicopter, whatever you are, just go away, just be really, like seriously, I don't care what you're doing, 